American Utopia is a show which toured many cities of the world before becoming a sellout Broadway hit. It's the creation of the incredible, ever evolving, ever creative David Byrne and features many of his best loved songs performed by 12 musicians, singers, and dancers live on stage using no pre recorded tracks. His wish was to represent hope and possibility on stage, and this he does in the most abundant of ways. This podcast was recorded six months after the Broadway run finished and explores how life has evolved since the show ended. It was hard to coordinate everyone to be in the same place at the same time, but we did manage to have Jacqueline, Bobby, Mauro, Danny, Tim, Stefan in the same room, and Tendai joined us by the magic of Zoom. I started by asking them how the show was put together. So we did one month of rehearsals of like 10 hour days, six days a week. The first week was all music, and the next three were like choreography was all we were like focusing on okay. the next three weeks. Well, there was also a lot of tech because you yeah, know, yeah. that's something this show, I think, it, because visually it's like, oh my God, it's so simple. There is nothing on the stage and they're like carrying their instruments. Mm-hmm. Yes, the empty but, stage. Yeah. yeah, but like underneath the suits and like hidden inside of the instruments, there is a lot of like technology, like the radio transmitters, you know, like the microphone. We had like on the suits, we had like this tracking devices for the lighting. Oh, like a GPS. okay. So okay. each one of us had like two. Right. And so there was a, a big, big technological aspect mm. that was really well hidden behind our like gray suits. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and that was part of also of like the, the rehearsals. I remember on the beginning of the second week, I think we spent like three days like dialing in the, the in ears monitors. Three days. Yes. Yeah. You know, going over every instrument and every song in a very thorough way. And so, yeah. And then we resumed the, after we had that, we resumed the learn three choreographies a day <laughs> and, you know, like, and that kind of thing. You're all there and you're all on the stage and you're ready to do this thing. And um, once you were in the groove, I guess it became just very, very natural and a really lovely thing. Um, How much did you worry about something technical failing? Mm -hmm. Like really, you know, if there's so much going on absolutely everywhere, was it a worry or could you just kind of just, could you go on, could you carry on no matter what? Oh, yeah. Our, oh, our, yeah. our drum tech was really phenomenal, Jerry Yeddo, yeah. Jeremy Yeddo, and um, he really, I think, and I'll speak, you know, on the drummer's side of things, and we just felt a great deal of confidence because he was taking care of things behind the scenes. Yeah. You know, so the, in, that, in that aspect, it was always like, you knew he was, he's solid, he was going to be there for you if something happened, you know, <laughs> you know, he would, he would take care of it so that part was wonderful i'm just remembering tendai one, on one song i'm standing next to tendai on once in a lifetime and all of a sudden she's like oh oh no <laughs> she runs off stage because yeah. we would have uh, costumes costume ripping issues, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah the drum does <laughs> open up yeah. are, you know, yeah. it's like where'd she go yeah i had one of those had... too <laughs> well they were quite yeah that was our tech Hi. They they, <laughs> they were. Our they... technical side was more so costume gripping and spatial proximity to not get hit and not hit mm. someone else and always be uh, prepared to catch David in whatever, whether it's vocally, physically. That was our technical side. <laughs> See, that's true. Because you're going, you guys are going forward and backward and to the side, and you might be just kind of, you just have to predict. It's like being a really good driver. Yeah. You have to predict what the next move is. Your best friend. Yeah. We had remarkably few collisions. Yeah. Considering surprising, amazing, like some guardian angel of no collisions. Yeah. <laughs> Hundreds yeah. of shows. And it even, especially like when we did the film, which was even more so because they were like steady cams on the stage. There oh, were yes. like little lights, like right. you know, behind the chain. There were like three lights in the back, or three cameras in the back, and right. like extra stuff going on and we still like we did pretty good <laughs> you know no collision but when you did collide was it just okay there was nothing like dramatic or like yeah. not a real like nobody got, got hurt or something 
but it was something it was kind of you always had to be conscious of the presence of people around you yes and after a while it becomes very intuitive i, I guess but the technical problems they always happen the thing is you, you need we needed to, to prepare much more than usual like if i'm playing like a drums on the gig i know what i need to be careful with sure for me to have the, the less problem possible yeah during the show for this we had to take care of like many like the suit the mic the in-ear like uh, i remember timmy had like a tape all over his body to make sure <laughs> or nothing will you know <laughs> why true. you why you i think i just had, i had so many instrument changes yes, that all of my wires were always getting pushed around all over the place and if i wasn't like totally taped up everything would be like falling and moving mostly like the, like the ears falling out of my ears yeah. okay and that's mic, horrible mic feeling moving. yeah yeah um, I was going to say, though, the technical things, I don't know if people remember, but early on, I feel like there's a lot of technical things because especially with the drums, everything was sort of built and modified so we could wear, we could wear everything. Yes. Because none of those instruments were built to actually go in the harnesses that we were wearing. No. So the beginning in the rehearsal process, um, there was like kind of like a, uh, like a, there was an area of the rehearsal room that was like set up to like build like the instruments and and all the different attachments and things like that and uh, Mark Edwards who was the production manager was also very skilled in these things so he was helping build everything yes but it was a lot of trial and error and, and for the beginning of the tour I mean I had a lot of things that were breaking all the time and then and at least by the end was once we got to Broadway and, and the final run everything was running like everything was super smooth by then but early on there was more technical things but do you think out. This is the experience in your life where you have had to um, hold on to a whole lot of different concepts. I mean, is it the most extreme version of that that you have ever experienced? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's yeah part of the technical problems are is because you're like dancing with your instrument. Yes. And which you're not the instrument isn't necessarily designed to do. So you're like you know building a contraption that allows you to do that, and just all the things that could potentially go wrong with that until you like tweak everything properly. But do you think that because you've had to learn how to multitask so ridiculously, have you taken that into life since the show? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, of course. But in what ways do you, can can you quantify anything that you feel is different about the way you approach multitasking now? I surprised myself singing while I was cooking. I uh, before mm -hmm. I wasn't. I'm just in the shower. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but that's a good question. Um, to, I guess to try to take a stab at that. Uh, if the show is really, because even some of the technical aspects that you're talking about for the beginning, the tour run, it's to like make the most out of having the least things yes. there. So that's on a personal level of like, yes, you normally are just percussion, but now it's like, no, you're going to dance and you're singing yeah. as well too. Let's maximize that. And then even um, there was changes made on Broadway that, we maxed out every possible input that we could do on tour. Yes. The, like, the guitar selections were, like, cut down because it was like, no, we just don't have an input for that. People didn't have microphones. Not that. So then Broadway opened it up in a way of that. But, I, but I, yeah, I, have like, have definitely left now with just, like, this this person, this moment, whatever. This Let's just take a song, for instance. And it's like, that's going on here. And I guess it's twofold because also with David, the thing I've learned the most is that He's like direct to the point. As as obscure as I think a lot of his art is, he like says what he means to say in a very clear manner. And so uh, there's many songs that I'm I'll be working on now where I'm just like, do we need all the fluff and stuff? No. And then there's other times too where it's like, are we making the most of like this color that we are using here, too? So I, I for me it's like a twofold. It is isn't type it? thing. But I wonder how equal did you feel in the team? Hmm. I, I felt like it was a. There was a lot of uh, importance of not thinking about it in that way or something to, mm -hmm. to be like this is this is the role here, like on certain songs especially like we need to hold down this groove and like make it feel really good. Yes. And if that's not happening, then whatever you know, like. So I've just felt, I felt that that was the challenge of of doing it so many times too, like to keep it feeling good. 
to get better at playing the pocket, to hook up with the other drummers even more as it, as the thing goes on. Just to like, not even to add any notes or anything like that, but just to like, it can be better, and be the same thing that you're playing can get better and better and more refined and more, so that like when you're playing, when we're playing a groove, I can just, he does a little different thing and we look at each other right away. Like, oh, oh, you know? Yeah. But it could be just like, no one would notice it. Okay. So it's less about how equal, I mean, that's the role, you know? There yeah. might be a moment where you're supposed to be silly, you know, or you're in the front of the stage and, okay, go be silly or, or you know, do something. Next time. Next time. <laughs> Next time, obviously, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, there's a, for, for me, there was a lot of, of, like, not just more like, what's the job? How to, to make this whole thing better, you know? I get it. So that's from, that's from your point of view. But I wonder hmm. about the kind of the bringing the ego in and just thinking, oh, I want to put a few more notes in there. I'm going to put a few more notes in there. And <laughs> I got this groove, but I'm going to I'm going to decorate it a bit right now. I really want to know. I think there was there was a moment on on the tour that was pretty. I thought it was like a lesson I learned. David, uh, at, at, we had another drummer percussionist, Davi, who was part of the tour and he was playing timbal, this yes. Bahian drum, yes. on toe jam. Mm. And, and at some point, I think he was like feeling really, he started like, you know, like <laughs> expressing himself yes. a lot. Yes. And David, but like he caught that and he turned to Carl, the, the musical director, and said, Carl, I think... Mm. One of the drummers wants to express himself on this song. Yes. And so we open up eight bars for him mm. to solo. Oh, no, that's so oh, nice. Right. Yeah, and it was Beautiful. like, it's so cool. You know, he didn't like cut him down or anything like that. He just like, he wants to express himself. And that's such a beautiful thing. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm. But presumably, if they're really, if David had that flexibility to allow you to be you, then. It's just like the folks who say, you know, I work in an office and there's beer in the fridge and there's um, table tennis over there. And we can do whatever we like and we work really hard. So it's a bit like that because maybe you knew that you would be heard. If you really wanted to do something badly enough, he'd let you do it. So yeah. maybe you didn't. You know, maybe he was quite unusual in doing that. Right, yeah. And also the, the, the word he used, you know, he wants to express himself. Yes, that's it's really something lovely. really yes. polite and special. Mm. Yes, it's really respectful, isn't it? Very, yes. In a big way. I think, you know, and that, that's something I, th I think everybody felt that way on the show, you know, like it doesn't, as, as Daniel said, it didn't matter the role that you had, even if it's like just playing a cowbell, like the whole thing, it's still, it's something so meaningful and important. Yes. That it's, yeah, I think it was a general feeling. But everything felt like it was given with intention and everything felt meaningful and important. Um, and that includes the silly stuff, actually. It was meaningful and important. How do you think you did that as a group? Or did that just come from the ethos that, that David was kind of sharing with you all? Or was it something that you all generated together and made happen because it was the group of people that you were? I think everyone would have a different answer, probably. Yeah. But um, for me, like the the, music, the songs are amazing. Are amazing. These songs, the lyrics, and the songs. Yeah. And then the idea of us on stage with no shoes, being together, carrying our instruments. I mean, when he first told us about it, it was like, okay, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna trust it's David Byrne. He's, oh, yes. you know brilliant and visionary so let's see where this goes you know and and we all felt that way i think even all during the first well not all but I, I felt you know during the first month of rehearsals like okay like where is this gonna go and then the first show we did i remember friends and family coming and being like yo this is profound and i think so i think it's it was a lot of following the the vision of david to me and Danny b and and also the trust that he put in Mauro and Carl and all the different, all yeah. of us into like making it happen. Like you never felt like you could say that you, if you had an idea for it, that it would be, it would never be shot down. 
it was like, huh, that's interesting. Let, let's try that. Or, or if it was not really not a good idea, maybe 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 later. But you know, which is fine. That's yeah, nice. but but um, I know everything was important. But it's I for me, I kept learning. I feel like I kept learning about what the art was constantly by. Even some songs like where you're just kind of sitting and being able to watch him or listen to the lyrics for the yeah four hundred excuse me four hundredth time and still be like damn that's a great lyric like, it is that yeah. still still hits me every time you know? absolutely absolutely so so that's you know and, has to be said yeah and then, so there was like the lyrics importance too and then the bigger narration of the show yes mm. itself um, on the tour version he gave the voting speech. Uh, I believe he spoke about immigration there too, but then also um, the only cover that was ever presented was like in 2018 or whatever that was was Janelle Monae's "How You Talking About," and oh. so and there was no there was no more dialogue in the tour other than that. But then when we get to the Broadway version, it is this like loose narrative of a person finding their way from like beginning until end, and how connections and community manners matters and he does it in like a not like I'm gonna spoon feed you this sort of way so it's this thing that like if you were to see it more times like you pick up on the further like depths of how like the meaning behind it and it's like community and you're also watching it as Daniel said in the manner that you are where we're just all 12 people barefoot performing <laughs> some music together and there is something about being barefoot you know there's a there's a, a vulnerability about it, a shared vulnerability, but also a real sense of being grounded, really connected to the earth in there. But yeah, it must have felt strange initially, especially if you've never done that before. Play barefoot? Yeah. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. <laughs> when we were in Hong Kong, <laughs> we went... <laughs> yes. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh my God, that's a... This, are we allowed to tell like tourist stories? Yeah, say it, say it, say it. This oh, is no. this what is happened? ten months into touring. Oh, yeah. I have somebody else tell the story. Yeah, can, you, yeah, you, can you guys? Um, well, we needed a group spa day, basically. So this is the, <laughs> the end of our run. Oh, no, oh, I, I think that's we, a different story. Oh, you don't no, want to? No, we went we went to dinner. Our friend, like in Hong Kong, took us to this amazing restaurant. Yeah. And then after that, she said, yeah, yeah. "Guys, let's have foot massage." Yeah. Because it's something traditional in yeah, Hong no, Kong. Sure, sure. And then we all end up in this parlor, you know, like, I think it was like 11 of us and we are just having foot massage. And then they start like, some people said, oh, we can scrape the dead, like skin. The counts is <laughs> off. It was just it was like... so. That, that was 10 months of wear and tear. Man. No. Yeah. It looked like it was snowing in there. But, oh, also, no, <laughs> was, but it also was such a laugh therapy. Certain because feet, we were like, just... fun. Let's be clear. <laughs> oh my God. I remember because I started. Really? And then you went like showering the whole thing. Oh, everybody, oh no. Everybody was like, oh, you're disgusting. But then everybody <laughs> <Everyone it>. did. <laughs> did it. All right. So if you Except wonder what Chris. it's like playing and hanging out with a bunch of men, this is what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Ten times were you there? This. Did you experience that? I was not in that room. We had our own separate massage <laughs> moment. Uh, but I fell asleep in my massage show. It was great. Um, but I appreciate playing barefoot, dancing barefoot at comfort and home. So I felt like I was, you know, doing the usual, just the most uncomfortable thing is doing it in a three-piece suit. <laughs> well, no, absolutely. And, and it's quite a tailored suit as well, as we've discussed with the seams. But it is quite yeah. tailored. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's tailored enough. But they're still, like, they've had to give um, what we had down to it were gussets on the inside of the pants so it would allow the pants to still keep the shape but allow Chris and I to move and hopefully not rip our pants. Yeah. I think that's what we need every day. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. <laughs> yeah it's a really good thing. Life. Um that's a great hoof story. <laughs> it's a really great hoof story. It wasn't a good idea though because it softened everything. Yeah, yeah the next slipped. yeah, he's, yeah. <laughs> Chris was like, I'm never doing this. You guys are crazy. And he was right. Yeah, was I didn't like, do yeah, that. Experience so Chris didn't do Chris, it. Chris, Chris oh, yeah. he was like, No, I'm keeping my You're keeping Because you earn them. You work hard for yeah, them you when work, you do yeah. that. But you get yeah. used to how the foot feels. Yeah, you know, like the, the, you shoe. create like a, a whole 
skin thing and it's then like, it protects you and then the next day we were like no protection here. nothing mm. it's like an intrinsic you know foot shield feeding everything yeah. on the floor yeah but we had a good laugh that was mm -hmm. hilarious yes. yeah but yeah barefoot is different especially carrying weight and dancing it's it was like a new skill yes as well. but it makes sense like you, you re somehow with the suit with shoes we would have looked like office people Oh, and yes, with no shoes, true. we look like dancers. Mm -hmm. Yes. We made it perfect. It was like mm. suit, but not formal. Just human beings. It's so clever, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And in, in David's explanation f uh, for the no shoes, it's like really, oh, yeah. He would look, would look weird. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it's like there is no other explanation, but just. <laughs> suits, suits would be formal. I yeah. wanted to be a little odd. So, yeah, no shoes. Yeah. Something. <laughs> But did it feel like you were part of a, um, a community when you wore the suits? Because, you know, that's like uniform, and, and many of us have not worn uniforms since school, and, and even at school some of us didn't wear uniform. Mm. But there yeah. is a particular thing about wearing the same thing as, as everybody else. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, you're kind of unified by this thing. But how did that feel? I, I, it's funny because I'm not a suit wearer. I'm, like, not a fan of suits generally yeah. but but um it did feel very much like that and it's funny when you just mentioned it right now i thought to myself like the the unifying factor is huge like i used to play in a in an all-female mariachi band mm -hmm. and we had uniforms right. and there's just something like there's a few things it's like you just it, there's a there's a simplicity and confidence about this is what i'm gonna wear yes you don't have to think about it you know everybody else is gonna yes. be there you know it's like kind of like i don't know like i'm not a big sports person but i feel like well, you know you put your jersey on and you're like oh this is my crew and we're gonna well, no, go and do something so did, yeah. it, did it feel like that i felt like that to me yeah, yeah for sure i think there's a, a unity there the whole I, thing totally. felt like a crew like like a, a fun gang but also not just a fun gang presumably a leveling it's a yeah. leveling mm -hmm. experience to right. just just wear that same cloth that's true um in there which is which is a great thing. Uh, yeah, there, and then like take because everyone you know each have own personalities and egos and whatever. But it's it's suits and it's gray suits, the most neutral color mm. there is. And then so then you do get Jacqueline's smiling face, and you get you see the personality of just mm. like what they're emitting rather than like a closed statement right. being the first thing that you just yeah, see in a person yeah, versus like point. what someone else is wearing. Mm -hmm. But that's really powerful. There's something really profound about that. Yeah. All the judgments we make. Mm -hmm. Immediately. I mean, fa to me, it's like fashion is the first thing you tell a person. Yes. Always. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So you come here and it's like, oh, this is, I've got to look somewhere else. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the suits are the same. Yeah. But that is so uh, profound, isn't it? See? Oh, yeah. That's the utopia of the... Yeah. yeah. Utopia. Utopia For me, the I used to look at it as if we were all some some sort of expansion of projection of of David's essence. Yes. Like we all some of... Some mm. some representation of of David somehow. That's interesting. That's how <laughs> I, I used to look at it. I'm I like, like oh, that. I like that I never heard you say that before. That's a good... That's a good... Uh... Well, yeah, I was, I was like... Yeah, the only yeah. difference is he had... He had because he's the boss, so he had an extra bucket. <laughs> yeah, really? yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. On, on, on his, tour. Yeah. On, he, he had yeah. like on, on the jacket, there was yeah. two or three pockets he was yeah. supposed to yeah. wear. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only different direction. Yes, yeah. but do we know whether he used the pockets because he likes pockets? I'm a great fan of pockets. Yeah. So did he just want the pockets because he really liked to put secret things in there? Pockets. Or was it purely aesthetic? I want to say pockets, pockets like you. Yeah, I don't you can. I don't want to say pockets. Oh, no, I'd, I'd like to say it like you, and I pockets. really am not going to attempt it. Pockets. <laughs> yeah, you have to ask the wardrobe guy why he did that. Yeah. No, ask David. But I, I don't think we're real pockets. Yeah, they were right? real pockets. No. It's just like... How do you know? Did you Well, on, on tour? On ours, there was no... Because he had the three on tour. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't... They weren't... You couldn't do anything with it. That's such a waste. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> But the Broadway ones, they were real. The two, the two that we had. Were really? Real. Oh, that's yeah, Broadway that's for you. Yeah. yeah. It, it was because that's oh. I put my light in there. Not ours. I never. I, opened, I don't know. I never I, opened I, this. I never. You know it when it's new. Oh, yes, real. So, and you have no, to ours, do it. Yeah, open it today. You can see. You'll be like, wow. oh my god. Oh yeah, we still have those. Yeah. Do you still have it? Oh yeah. yeah. They gave us. Yeah, they gave oh, we have. They gave us. Them. They gave us Broadway route. Except, run one and the tours. Except for the yeah, the last. Yeah, we don't have the last one. They still have our last ones. Yeah. Right. 
Are you going to say be... something about that? <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's Ooh, what such does that mean? What does to that be mean? continued. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> but listen, you laugh over here because over here we're saying that it's an expansion and projection of David's essence. That's what you are. And and that's so poetic and wonderful, but ah. it's it's also it's it's an amazing thing to have have stated. Because actually, what is David Essence? Okay, David Essence, we can wear it, okay? Mm -hmm. We can think about it, but you were it. So, what is David Essence? Well, I'm not sure it's, it was the purpose. It's, it's uh, Again, that, that's the way I was. I know, but I love it. <laughs> I think it's true. Well, his essence, for example, mm -hmm. is very wide, I would say, like, and very uh, welcoming people from all different sort of backgrounds, mm. so you could see that on stage. Yes. The great observer. Uh, yeah, the great yeah, observer. Nice. The whole show is about observing human beings as well. I mean, he was talking about, like, that's the most interesting thing you can look at is another human being. More than a bike and organic mangoes. Yeah. <laughs> Asking I think questions, mm -hmm. maybe too, right? But, uh, yeah, yeah, everybody making... Nice movements so some movements will be like the same as david some movement will be different mm. i don't know how to explain it. is there sense that i don't know i see it as a gold when i think about him i, I, I not gold like the material but the color yes that's what i see that's really interesting not the material but the color in there if I think about him, I feel like there's a consistent theme of um, hopefulness. Mm. And so I think that that really was something that all of us could absorb on the stage and in the audience. And I think there, that that's why that statement of like, the show is really about all of you and us, you know, connecting. So, I mean, I see that you, you see that in the like reasons to be cheerful yes. stuff that he does. You can see it in his artwork. Yeah. So I think that um, that's something that really resonated with me and sort of like a hopefulness and joy. So if you if you actually came along and uh, came along to the theatre and you're having a really, really awful day, really, really bad, was it just enough to just get into the hopefulness and joy of being in, in that production? Or did you need to kind of, did he encourage you to just kind of get rid of what you were carrying and to say what's on your mind because presumably he could sense if there was something that was wrong or something wasn't okay did he ever say you know what's up or did you feel that you wanted to kind of say what was on your mind before you could get going into the process and feel clear-headed or was it just the process of doing it that made you clear-headed hmm. many options i i think he would He's not the kind of person that would come to you and say, Ooh, what's wrong? Mm. I'm feeling bad today. Mm -hmm. It would be more like give you space, but at the same time kind of embrace you and try to be positive in a very subtle way. You know, like really, I feel you. You're probably feeling shitty today, but let's try you know, something. And in a subtle way, just probably make you feel better. Also, he said he sets uh, by example. Like there were times around tour, especially where we were so tired, and he's just like, "All right, showtime!" And he's like, mm. just throwing down, like mm -hmm. singing his ass off, yeah. jumping around. Like, man, this guy, we just biked, you know, all these miles, and he's like jumping around on stage. No right to complain or deliver a, a halfway performance like how how is he doing you know so i feel like he and i, I agree with mara I, I was thinking at one time i was we were on tour and, and i got a stomach bug so the band flew ahead they changed my flight because i couldn't there was no way you know no. and he sent me uh a link to a funny 10 minute movie <laughs> like hey this is a warner Herzog so nice. narrates a movie about a plastic bag Right, it gets lost. He's like, you might enjoy this. And I was like, that was, you know, thinking of you. Yeah, thinking, thinking of you. you. <laughs> As you're in your bathroom, 
<laughs> so the plastic bag mm. that got lost. Yeah. So was it made into a kind of a personality? Yeah, it's really funny, and, and it's Werner Herzog narrating. It, oh so. well, come on. Yeah, it's pretty good. I think you need to share that with us all, frankly. Yeah, okay. I agree. <laughs> who is who is the narrator? The the director Werner Herzog. Oh well, yeah. German director. <laughs> it's a plastic bag. It's uh, anyway. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta do that. I think you've really really got to do that. One thing I liked was. Um, as far as like trying to clear your head, I don't know if it was always possible to do, you know, in many ways. Um, I noticed it got easier as the week went on, like after the days off, I'd show up to the first show and just like, you know, a lot of stuff went hap- would well, go yeah, on exactly. in the days off. So. Yes. Um, but one thing that I always liked was the pre-show banter that we had oh, in our so ears. Good. Oh, yeah. Um, and that was something that always kind of got me ready for the show. And yeah. it was just everyone's mic was open and we're backstage behind the curtain and everyone can talk and tell jokes and stories and... It was different every night. And that should have been made a show. But we didn't, yeah. we, we didn't should... see each other. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we couldn't see each other. Well, actually, well, the band was split in two. Yeah, two sides. Depends on where you were. Oh, so you couldn't see each other. You could just hear yeah, it. James yeah, waiting yeah. by the Only chair. Here. Curtains down. Oh, of course it is. Yeah. Yeah. Angie's on the other side. Me Bobby's telling jokes. Oh, Bobby's on our side. Bobby. David was already on stage, <laughs> but the waiting for the thing to start. Well, and Angie had for sure the best like the best line yeah oh she would yeah. 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 she would yeah. be like we, we we should make a show of you like yeah, telling yeah. These funny jokes i literally like, miss that sometimes i'm walking down the street and i'm like i wish i had my in-ears now pre-show oh so you were not together at that moment because of course you weren't together at that moment so you didn't have a kind of a physical routine of kind of hey yep or anything before you started because you're all in different places yeah yeah. We had different we routines. Did. I mean, the drummers, yeah. we always yeah, we yeah. always gave a hug before the show. Okay. We had yeah. a line. Everyone's in your place getting ready. Getting well, and everyone you know. was on that side of the stage. Right. The, drummers, the drummers, including the drummers Bob, Bob as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I think Tendai, when in the first Broadway run, we kind of like waved. Oh, yeah, you came down the stairs. Oh, that's You're right. like in that we little stair. Yeah. And then start making little check in points with everyone. Yes. Throughout, like, if you don't see him in the beginning of the show, it's like this song is this chorus. This is say hey. Yeah. This in between this song when I'm going back backstage it's when we say hey. Yeah. So I feel like those things are checked in. So that's the kind of that's the kind of backstage hey. But one of the one of the most amazing things about seeing the show is seeing how you really connect. You know how people say, you know, if you're going to have a drink, you know, you need to say cheers, but you need to look somebody in the eye. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there really, really is. And it's not just the moment where, oh, something's different and someone's moved in a different way and that's humorous or it's it's interesting. There is There are definite real moments of that connectivity. And it's really moving to see. It's really moving. I'm always kind of amazed that people can see that from the audience. Because actually, do you know what I mean? But you don't just do it with your eyes. You do it with your you do it with your body. You yeah. know, it's a kind of a it's a thing you're you're giving so much with that look, every single time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great. <laughs> Made like, us like keep it alive too for yeah. you know for each other. Yeah. And also, I think one maybe this happened because. We had the opportunity, you know, we played uh, between the, the, the first, uh, the tour and the two Broadway stints was like 400 shows. Mm-hmm. Then you're like, you can really start dialing every detail, like sonically, like the, the way we play the instruments, you know, like how we connected, how we look at each other. Yeah. So there is like so much room to always make it better yeah. or always make it like deeper and that's how it felt you know it never felt like boring or like oh yeah i'm just gonna go do my job you know mm-hmm. it never felt that way i always felt like something oh i gonna let's find something else, like that we can explore a little bit further and, and make it better you know like so you're never just going through the motions but i think that with anything that is choreographed or anything that is kind of planned in a loose sense you can very much just look at somebody because you just have to be opposite opposite me just there and then I'm going to look at you because you just happen to be there. But that connectivity that happened every single time yeah. is, it, it felt so fresh and it felt so genuine. I do think that's an extraordinary thing. 
And those those connectivities are there to be explored. You know, when once you find them, it's like, oh yeah, this is great. And I'm sure we yeah. left some there unexplored. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know. <laughs> I mean, I know I definitely like once there were points of songs or things like that where. Um, I do, I have zoned out or just gone on like uh, remote control yeah. and you're like yeah. going through the motion of the song. But then knowing that that's a moment that, oh, Miss Lou and Chris lock eyes, Miss Lou and Jacqueline pass each other, that always like helps check in. Mm -hmm. And then seeing how just devoted David's fan base is. Oh, okay. And there would be so many shows where you would see like, um, there was one show where there's just young boy in the front, just, I mean, bawling his tears out, just losing his mind. And I definitely had a moment of like, oh, wow, he's looking up here at us. Like, I'm, oh, this is like, you know, just remembering just how much things are bigger than you, mm. but also you are a part of it. And I feel like that make those moments of check in of like each show of like, oh, we're making this moment together. You know, repetition, the beauty of it, how it makes room for, new experiences, new adventures, where you're doing something like over and over, especially with Broadway, mm. you, I start to really understand, oh, if you're going to do this every night, mm -hmm. every single song the same way, you got to figure out how to make it exciting for yourself. Yes. So even when you think of like, you were talking, asking me about movement, things started happening just off of understanding sustainability. Like I have to be on the same side every night, I have to survive this. And how do I make it exciting for myself as yes. much as it is for the audience? And it's only going to be real if I believe it. And it seemed like those moments for us to check in with each other of like, I don't know, like, oh, are you on? Are you locked in? You know, it's the, it was like just the recharges that were really necessary. Mm. I mean, I wasn't carrying an instrument except for my body. But yeah. um, even when that felt heavy, <laughs> mm. having to have those moments of like, you know, um, kind of how I feel like David and Seals of like not just doing art for art's sake. Yes. But there is there is meaning even if you don't feel it in that day, the next day someone else is. You know? And how much he supports us as artists outside of being in the show, I think continues to feed each person's um, dedication to the show because it's not like you're just to do a gig and then you walk away your boss doesn't talk to you anymore mm. he's you know very much so a, a person and having to decide as a dancer a lot of times like a lot of shows where you're kind of like treated as a background at times and so you have to yeah. assert for yourself and so having any be there assert for us and have such a close connection to david him value not just the movement but all of it I feel like continue to open the freedom of wanting to explore the song differently, of wanting to find a way of, of expanding the show, but also still keeping the core of his vision. Mm -hmm. And then I think it influenced, I mean, me personally as an artist on how I could take that approach, that approach to my own work. You talk about value. I think it is all about value, really. Um, I think you've said so much in there, but I I like the fact that you've also said that actually recharges are necessary. That, that really like that struck me too. Because actually, yeah. it's it's true. I think when we're remembering how it was, it's we remember the energy and the and and the wonderfulness of of everything. But that's really real. Saying that you did need those recharging moments, and they can just take a split second, can't they? But yeah. you also mentioned about the, the little boy in, in the front row. And I really want to know how you felt about um, about the audience and the fact that it's not just us and them, but how you were how you were connecting and what that meant in different situations. I mean I just remember being I remember being and seeing the show and we just looked at each, other, at each other so much during that show, and I just thought, this is amazing, because I know you must give that out every single night, but it felt so real, and it felt that it was really okay to be fully participating as an audience member, to, be, to feel that freedom to actually say, yeah, I'm, I'm actually a part of the, of the body of this energy. And that, 
was an incredible gift. Mm. But I wonder how you felt about it. Really? I mean, I, I, I loved it. Every time, like, so going back to the thing that she was saying about recharge and the audience is that, like, we would get those recharges with each other, and but also with the audience. So, if, like, I remember looking out and, like, it literally made friends from looking out yes. at the audience and being, like, and just connecting with someone's energy or spirit and being like, oh, no, they get it. Yes. Like, and there's, like, a connection that is does not even need to be spoken. And I think it's really parallel to David's work in this, in, in this particular show in the sense of, like, you know, he's talking about, you know, and he's talking about when you're, uh, you know, the baby brain where you're like, oh, should I talk to those people or yes. should I go over there or should I do that? And, like, sometimes you feel like you're just sort of in life in the same way that you were talking to Andai about just, like, going through the motions. Sometimes you just feel like you're kind of going through the motions or, like, lost in outer space and then you connect with a person. And yes. if that person is your friend on stage who you've gone through things with and, you know, or if it's a, a perfect stranger in the audience who mm. you feel like a, an instant connection with, um, I think that that's what, like, really causes the show to flourish because there's all these little sh charges and sparks of energy happening yeah. while we're doing the show yeah. that you know couldn't happen and so it kind of goes back to the thing you were saying is like if you do come in kind of like oh i had a hard day or i've had a full weekend of like dealing with xyz um and you come into the show there are those moments that just like zip, they zap you in a, in a great way they give you they give you a zing of energy that um is also like reciprocal and the other person can receive it as well yes it's so beautifully put what are you can say no i'm just lost in thinking about the show <laughs> yeah one thing just thinking on that too because it is so much like that the with each other and then the audience and then just thinking it from the audience this isn't a show where there's like a spinning stage that happens <laughs> and this thing flies at you where there's all these like whoa 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 yeah. it's it's actually yeah. just like that connection there yeah um and so you know i guess probably intensifies that even more so yes it does yeah because it's quite raw isn't it there's nothing there's nothing big and flying to hide behind this is just it yeah. people yeah. in a room together it's just the and me but i will say sometimes it is nice when you kind of have a low day that you remember they're looking at david <laughs> yes. So it's like moments when you get a moment to shine, and then if you don't shine that bright that day, you're like, oh, well, they came to see him anyway, so I'll make it up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, we never know that though. Yeah. And there can be just just one person who's just really focused on you, just because of the essence of the, the movement that you have chosen to give at any one moment. And I think it's very easy on a low day to just think, oh, actually, they're just looking at David, but we never know that. Mm. That's the beauty of having that live audience. You don't know who they're looking at or why they feel that they resonate with you. You have absolutely no idea. I, I love having friends come to the show and give their kind of rundown. And it's always so different, you know? Mm. Like, who's the guy who has all the bells and Tim? <laughs> Man, he is the star of the whole no. show. You're like, wow, you're like, or someone, you know, it could be anybody. And it was always like, wow, that's, that's yeah. super cool. Like, people are just moved by different things, like you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe that's why we had, at, we could see some, some people that return, like, maybe 10 times. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was this couple. Okay. He was really, we, we start like, <laughs> Oh, yes. them. Yeah. They came back. You know, there they are. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're sitting front row, always front oh. row. And was like always. Okay. Oh, we must say goodbye to Tendai. Bye, Tendai. Listen, thank you so much. It's been so lovely to see you. Bye, Tendai. Thank you. Bye, thank Tendai. you. Thank you. Good to see you. Bye. Say hi to Greg. Bye. Yeah. Bye. See you all. Bye. 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 Show in December. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So I think people had this almost like a nerd oh. to, to come back and see the show again with like because you know there is so many variables and so many ways of seeing it. And is that why people come back again and again because there are so many variables? I don't know even if they don't come back because there are so many variables. Maybe they come back because they just need to hear the basic theme mm -hmm. of why 
life is really full of hope and it can indeed be full of joy and it's such a very simple thing so maybe they go back just to hear the same thing again and I think yeah there are those who go back and just think I want to dig dig a little bit deeper this time and see what else I I can see right. and the humor people connected with the humor they wanted to laugh like we had tons of comedians <laughs> who would come to the show like Amy Schumer and Fred Armisen and like they would come repeatedly to the show oh, yeah. to like hear David because he's funny. Yes, <laughs> I was thinking about yeah. Bobby said how we're you know we're not there's no it's not a you know it's not Harry Potter with the light but there's there's so many levels to the show. There's so many art. It's such an architecture of things going on. And even as someone you know as being in it, there were so many times where I would like well, I have I would have another realization about kind of what's going on here. Yes. Like, okay, there's the shapes, and then we're all separate, but we're all together. And, and then even little lyrical things that I that would escape me for hundreds of shows. Like, oh, that's why he's saying that uh, we're all from different places. Like, dummy. Like, you know, okay. I missed that. I missed it, you know, for 300 shows. Yes. <laughs> you know, there's, so there's many things. To, I mean, but I do feel <laughs> like uh, I did have this sensation, I don't know if you guys had it too, of like, who I am in the show is only in relation to everybody else and that we're all having this different experience of the show and of yeah. life through how we move through the space. So like I know when I'm here, I see these guys and they're moving and that's also how I knew where to go. So for example, if someone else yeah, of course. didn't do what they usually do, oh, yeah. I'd be like, oh, where do I go? You know. <laughs> Actually, there was yeah. something on this last Broadway run we had because of the whole COVID protocols, we had these subs or understudies. Understudies, yeah. And whenever some oh, of like the, the, whenever an understudy stepped in, of course, it brought like their own personality, mm -hmm. and and we would miss like some some little details here and there, and 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 those connections that you're we talking before, you know. I remember when. Uh, uh, Abe. Yeah, Abe stepped in for Bobby. <laughs> Me and Bobby had this little time that we spin and we look each other in the eye. We almost like, you know, and then we. Yeah. And then I I tried to do that with like Abe, and he was like, <laughs> "What do you want?" What is this? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh. That's just a bit much. <laughs> and and it's something so it's it's not not something you say. Oh yeah. At, at that moment when you play that note, look at me and, you know, it's like it's something so... It has to be natural. You know, it has to be yeah, natural. Here's the note. <laughs> Did you have and to talk about that afterwards? <laughs> no, I was like, oh, how are you going to explain that? But, but of course, then we made some other connections. Yeah, you know, that, So it's like... Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I loved... Um, um, is it Dance Like This? Um, where we're sleeping? Mm -hmm. Just waking up and then seeing everybody yeah. waking up. There's just these little moments like smashed, you know, imprinted in your in your in your brain. In your brain. And then Does this have? Oh, and also, and then you're going, yeah. All, yeah. Also, this other one I just always thought about on um, um, Take of a Donkey. I'm forgetting it. Every day is a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> At the end, we're all spinning around, mm -hmm. and that was like for me. That was like an ecstatic, beautiful, like whirling dervishes. You know, oh, I always thought like, of it as like the mm -hmm. science, you know, when you look at, at all the, the germs. Yeah, but I always felt moving the, around. Moving around, science, yeah. like, like we're like electrons bump, bouncing. Yeah, exactly. Right? Everyone's like, we never touch, but we're like. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah that and, moment, it was special. Special Good, moment. Right? My first show, I remember when when he came to that. So I jumped in, in I jumped on the tour from one day to the other. Okay. Uh, I learned the thing on the plane, whatever I could. Take. Oh! And then he was in Oxford, England. Yes. The, the first show I did, and when we got to that cycle, mm. so we already like we already two thirds in, in, into the show, and I'm like, wow, I'm nearly done, <laughs> because it's, it was like a marathon for me, and uh, and then uh, <laughs> the whole thing, I'm like, what's going on? Like yes, I'm of discovering course. the whole thing while the on first stage. Time. Yeah. yeah. And then we we doing this cycle, and then and then I s felt like a, a bunch of of kids, and then Tendai is just like a happy 
mm. sort of angel yeah. going in the middle of the sand. I was, I'm, I was like, I'm, I'm in a dream. It's not possible. <laughs> yeah. it's, where, where am I? Like, <laughs> Plus, you're like jet lagged entire. Also, yeah, like, you did not sleep for two days. I jet think. lag. I mean, the, the night. Be- you didn't have to. Be Mauro lag. called me for the gig the, the day before. Like, I'm, you know. I had like a huge hangover, I had a late <laughs> and, and I was well, like, what, what's there, going on? Like I took the plane in the afternoon and then I realized what the show was once at the airport and I was like, oh shit, <laughs> what <laughs> shit? <laughs> what did I sign up for? <laughs> what is, why, why did I say yes? <laughs> How, I'm, now there's no other way I'm going to have to... You have to do it. To do yeah. it when yeah. you look at it, it was like, wow, I was ready to go and play drums, make notes. Yeah. You know, I think Chris was like, oh, no, he should not be on the stage because Chris is the dance captain. And I was like, no, no, let's put him on the stage, you know, like right away. The first show, because we had this show in London coming up. And for me, it was like use these shows that we have as a rehearsal for him. So yeah. Stefan should be on the stage the whole time. Yes. And I was like, Stefan, you're going to be on the stage the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. <laughs> And that was pretty amazing, right? He was, they, yeah. they, they, they parked you at some point, um, a couple of songs, parked you somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there was there a couple those... of songs, it was too much. So uh, Just, I, I stayed on the stage. You're going to smash into stage. you. You stand here. Mm-hmm. I remember, so I didn't know the guys. Then um, it was fun that night. And I'm, I'm completely <laughs> spaced out. And then I'm dancing with Bobby, front of stage. <laughs> it's the fourth song or something. <laughs> And then I'm playing and I'm like, what's going on? And he, oh, this guy is cool and he's dancing with me, so it's nice. And then he's showing me the like move now, move now, so nice. And then I'm playing the snare and the hi hat, and then suddenly I feel the snare going going down. Oh, oh yeah. And down and down because I had no idea of all the, the technical no. thing you to prepare we talk about yes. before. Did the protocol one of we had some yeah. protocols about like if something is happens on the stage you know yeah and the ch- change for the drummers changing the instruments all the time that's that's a difficult part of that yes. show and so i must have put the, the snares in a way that he wasn't really and then i'm i'm looking at the snare going like this and bobby's dancing very happy and i'm and i'm like trying to play now and i'm like oh if the snare falls down i'm back in new york tomorrow so <laughs> what <laughs> so what Stay here. Well, how how come how can I sort this out? Now? Well, go on. What happened? And then Mauro so- saved me. You had the off mic, and he said, uh, "Go to the curtain now." <laughs> yeah, I, so, I actually my microphone was open just to Stefan. Yeah. So I was like telling him sometimes, you know, okay. I said, Stefan, let's go to the curtain, and somebody's gonna fix it for you. So he like slowly moved mm-hmm. to the side and you know and then somebody like kind of fixed yeah. this narrative fortunately you noticed yes, I was, I was lost. you noticed <laughs> oh yeah i was i was keeping, keeping an, an eagle eye on, eye on, on him time. right yeah i think that that day was i was also helping him with the choreography yeah. saying like okay now move to the yeah. right of the stage turn around <laughs> you're right the other way over here you were like and come with us over then he went to other way and then he's like no over here over here <laughs> I found it on YouTube. Oh, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. There is oh, video. Of his very first show. Yeah, his very first show. Yeah, yeah, oh, I'd love and, to see that. And after that, after that first show, I think there was a friend on the audience and we asked, okay, we asked like this person, there was one person on the stage that had never done before and he stepped in. Can you tell who it was? Hmm. And this person couldn't tell. So wow. he Look did you. such Kudos. a wonderful job. It was yeah. like impressive. So, so you need to, to keep it fresh? No. <laughs> so to keep it fresh, you need to be completely jet lagged, definitely hung over yeah. and not know your moves. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Exactly. Yeah. Stefan's keys to success. Yeah, that's uh, what they call it. Yeah. To sleep on stage when you're not supposed to as well. So the, the sleeping thing, that one, oh, that's, yeah. a, that's, that's a, now my fifth or sixth gig. I think it was in Berlin or something. <laughs> then, um, you know, we, if you remember, we stayed yeah. like this. We stood on the and ground. And then the, I'm one of the first one to supposed to go up. Oh, yeah, jet lag. You had to play the yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, the, no. jet, the jet lag really <laughs> took me at one point. Did it was like I arrived instead? straight. Did somebody do it instead? Okay. He, he, I slept no. until the second chorus. I think. No. <laughs> Must have been great to look at. 
Right? Yes. Like everybody true. wake Real. up except one guy. Like, <laughs> you have to find that one on YouTube next. I must somebody have been really <laughs> I like it. And when I woke up, I was like, where am I? What is, where is this? Who are these guys? Yes. You where turn the zone though. <laughs> Completely <laughs> out. I did the same thing as you once where we, we, we have to change instruments and go quickly and go back on stage. So we go back on stage and then Stefan is... He's got no drum. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, my God. Like, oh, I, I forgot to take the drum. I did it myself, too, once. I was like, yeah. oh, shit. You know, like, run off stage. Yeah. But then what does happen? Somebody has yeah. to fill in. Well, surely. What do you do? You make it work. I, I, I mean, it's, yeah. it was never a disaster. Yeah. No, it's never. It, 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 those are, like, the, the, the funny exciting. parts, I think. They're exciting I did, I did that once, you know, yeah, like, yeah. we played that song, Everybody's Coming to My Life. And I... <laughs> I I played. Yeah, that's interesting. My life. That's interesting. Oh, everybody's going to my it's my, my house. Life. Okay. Manifesting. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> 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 All right. Do you want to talk more about that? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody comes to my life. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm I'm supposed to play bongos. So when I go outside, I drop the congas or drop the instrument that I, the, the timbales, and I don't pick up the bongos, and I go to my place. Like and up to the moment that I'm like, I'm gonna play the bongos and go. There's yeah. no bongo. <laughs> Gustavo looks at me like. <laughs> <laughs> so I go outside, pick up oh the bomb. <laughs> yeah. That's that the, that's part of doing the same thing every day. Some so many movements you just do and do and redo. Yes. Then one day you just forget. Yes. And it's all fine. Yes. Yeah. David David had a moment also once that he because he had during the brother show all these these lines you know in between songs, storytelling. Of, and one time he jumped, he jumped, yeah, skipped yeah, yeah. one song. Oh, and no. we are like, we told the different, the different story. And he story. started telling a different story of like the one song time. I had. And we are like, uh, we didn't know what to do. Cause we're all yeah. in like very specific spots backstage for yeah. each song. Right. So like we might be on the stage left or stage oh, yeah, right. Exactly. So, different no, instruments. Uh, this is really interesting. Yeah. So actually, what did you do? I think at some point he... Carl came in, Carl had his, Carl also, his voice was never on the audience, on the, uh, but uh, we, we, we could we hear could him talk to you. Yeah. because uh, he, he did the counting about. of the song. Yeah. So he's like, David, I think we <laughs> skipping one song. He was really polite, yeah. you know. Yes. Uh, and then yeah. David was like, oops. On stage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I think I, yeah. I'm telling the wrong story yeah. here. Oh, that's you know? really good. That's yeah. So, yeah. so endearing and, and lovely and becomes its own moment, doesn't it, really? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, and we calm. kept us on our toes. We were like, do we do the next song? Do we? I think everybody went. Like, yeah, yeah. How we do I like, get to my next instrument? Yeah, exactly. Cause because cause you guys were on the, on the wrong yeah, side of the stage, side. right? Yeah. 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 But was Carl the only person who could have said something at that moment? I think so, yeah. or maybe or a text, yeah. or yeah, or text. one of the stage managers. Stage manager, right. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you're just waiting and hoping. Yeah, somebody. Yeah, we were just waiting, and then Carl took the initiative. That was awesome. Oh, that's a beautiful moment. Yeah, actually, my friend Stephen Bursting once he came. He's this incredible trumpet player, and he came to the show. Wow! And he loved. He was like he. It, I think there was a, for some reason, you know, like family reason, the show really hit him like in one incredible spot. It's kind of a sad story, but uh, he came to the show. And it was exactly in one day, there was a big vocal mistake on, on, on the beginning of like Road to Nowhere. That, you know, the choir part of the beginning was like, oh my God, it was like, I think it was the only time that was a big mess. Oh. And after the show, I, I saw him, I was like, man, I'm so sorry that, you know, you saw the show that there was that problem. And he was like, man, I love those moments. I live for those moments. Mm -hmm. You know, like the, the mistakes are the most sincere. And, and and he said in a such a nice way, I was like, really? It's like, oh, absolutely. Those are like real, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's like, it's like real people, you know? So it's like, those moments are very special. Um, and I was like, wow, that's, it's, it's an amazing way of like seeing you can see as failure, you know, as but no, no, that's the moment that it tells that we are human beings. And, and doses, I'd say. 
Huh? Hidden small doses. Too many of those moments in a single performance, Anna. <laughs> well, it it's it's true, you know, but it's like no, it can't it be proves beautiful. Like it's, it's, Definitely, it's, that it's not perfect. It's we not could we could run everything through auto tune. Do what? We could run everything through auto tune if we wanted to do. Yeah, that. You exactly. Could, you know? You know, but it's but like that, it is those imperfections. David's voice is like the perfect example yes, of that. Absolutely. Where it's yeah. like there's so much vulnerability in it that yes. Yes. it's about the expression more than like oh, the, this pitch and you know. Yeah, but I think he saw it, you know, and David saw it too. You know, it's like a mistake. It happens, and it's okay. Yeah. You know, of course we're gonna work and fix it, mm. but it happened. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna like. I don't know. It's it's something so it's it's acceptable. Yeah, I mean, you know? similar to collision, do something yes. like five hundred times, yes. right. and then you know, not all the baskets are gonna get made. No, that's really true. Yeah, it's a, it's a lesson for me. You know, it's because I respect Steven a lot. Yeah, to call it mistake is a point of view actually. Yeah, yeah it's a point of view. Good point. When I first got to Brazil, uh, I got invited to play on this uh, important record, Gaetano Veloso. Uh, with a great producer, Cassine, and everything, and then I'm recording, and then, and then at one point I fucked up, like I, I did something on the bass drum, I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to redo this and everything, so I go up, and then I will listen, and then, and then when it goes to that moment, I'm like, oh, I have to redo this, I, I made a mistake there, and then the guy turns and he says, it's the best moment. Oh. He said, there's no mistake in music, what are you talking about? And I was like, Wow, that's different. <laughs> Kaitano said that? No, the, the producer. Oh, I see. was like, no mistake in music. That's great. Like, that was a great opening for me. Mm. Like, if you, if, also, if you're just scared of missing and doing mistakes all the time, then you never really yourself. You so, never dare. Yeah. But the other thing is that you make a, you make a faux pas. And as you say, it's, it's somebody else's magic. And they're experiencing that. And I think if you really understand that yourself, then that's great. But also, if you're really living in the moment, then you can let it go. And yeah, I agree. You don't want to be, be experiencing that all the time because it can under, it can unnerve your, the very, the very core of you. I understand that. But I think it's about letting it go as well. Whatever it yeah. is, whatever it has been, it's, it's been part of this music just right now. And now this is what's happening right in this moment. But mm -hmm. it's difficult, isn't it, if you're just still thinking about what may have happened mm. or how other people are perceiving it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll mess up again. Just accept <laughs> yeah, it. Right. That's right. A lot of jazz musicians actually will repeat the same mistake to make it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. To, to make, make it, it like, oh, it's purposeful. a choice. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's a classic. Yeah, I mean, yes. the, the, that's definitely the great... The, the bebop players who are yeah. really improvising and not just playing licks are always saying like, you know, you, you go, I'm making, I'm fixing, the, I'm making the mistake and then I try to resolve my mistake. So I try to get myself in trouble with mm. improvising. I mean, yeah. this is different. We're not really improvising, but those improvisers are like, I'm trying to get in trouble and then force myself to find a way out of it. So then it, so, so it makes it into something new, but. But it's not about really getting out of it. It's about finding a resolution. A resolution. Yeah. I don't mean. And I mean, I think, I don't know, there's, there's, just some, there's something quite deep about what you've just said. That's why I just think that's just like life, really. You know, yeah. it's, it's just, you know, it's not just trying to, I've got to get out of this. It's, you know, th there will be a re resolution. I'm here now, but there is, there's going to be a way. There's going to be a way. Don't really know what it is. That, yeah, there's bebop guys. It's a challenge, isn't it? Forcing out of the comfort zone. And also, I remember in the show, if I made a mistake, if I thought about it and felt bad about it, it's just going to take me out of the... The present. Yeah. Take me out of the present yeah. and... and and, um, you know, when you're feeling good, you're transmitting that good feeling, too. I mean, there's enough of us feeling good that if somebody's off or whatever, that it's not going to, the thing is still going to go. But, you know, however you feel, you can, you can convey that emotion and groove or sound, you know. When you're feeling good, it's like it's contagious. Uh, but that's... I always want to say, I just, so not to interrupt you, but no, I, I just no. kept thinking about this moment in the, in the show. There were these moments that I feel like, um, were like architecture as well of like made they always felt good that's amazing to me like um, once in a lifetime when it goes to the end of the song it's just built to like it's amazing it just always felt like ecstatic oh yeah I think it was the way Jacqueline was playing those symbols and dancing you know it's like <laughs> <laughs> it 
was uh, Thanks, Lado. I'll take I, that. I, I was I always <laughs> no joke. No I, joke. No, I was always next to her and I was carrying this big drum and I right. couldn't do that. So yeah, I was yeah, so yeah. frustrated. Yeah. I wanted want to do that. I, I want to experience oh, that. Everybody you know? wants to do that. <laughs> but you make up for it in Road to Nowhere. Oh, right. Yeah. Right? Okay. <laughs> 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 and then I have the big drum. Oh, yeah. Good yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. balance. No, we're not. <laughs> got the leaps really good. the last months. Yeah, those last months. So if this experience was so intense and I guess must have touched every fiber of your beings. So how how did you grieve it? Cuz I remember when I met you guys and we actually had a hang. I don't know. I felt I felt it has been such an experience to see this, but it was very near the end. Yeah. And um so I was feeling a bit of the grief. Just thinking, well, not that many people can come see this. And um I really want everybody to come and see this and I want to come and see this again and and uh so we did talk a little bit about grief when we did our hang. But this is six months on and I want to know really how you've dealt with grief a bit. Mm. Well it's been more than six months, the whole yeah. for different people, but the whole thing it was like kind of four years or something. Uh, six, yeah, months six months since ended. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, well, it's like everything, right? You have like a moment with something, and then suddenly something is not there anymore. So it, I mean, it was a very intense thing, professionally, humanly society like uh, and also like schedule wise difficult to do anything else like still did but uh suddenly suddenly you have your all all your nights are free yes that's a big difference and suddenly you don't see the friends every day uh, um but then all the doors start to open and then you start doing something else uh, for me what has been great is to to kind of be able to to sit and, and look at it like we're doing now with the distance. Yes. And uh, and I could see where it changed me and and what I learned from it and mm. what I'm doing better now. But what do you think you are doing better now? What am I doing better now? That's a good question. Um, I think I'm playing better my instrument. I'm singing better while I'm playing as well. That's mm. musical things, but we've done it so much. I, I used to do it before. I've noticed again, again independence. Um, now I dance like a motherfucker. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe yes, I'm less, I'm less shy with my body. Maybe uh, in a situation of uh, dancing or even like uh, being with other people in a party and not saying anything, I could feel that maybe I'm less shy now yeah. with how I, I, I interact, just physically. Yes. That's a really big thing. It's huge. Yeah. It's huge. Uh, and also, like, there's a. I mean, personally, I learned a lot just to observe everybody working. Like, uh, not only my partner, musician, actor, singer, dancers, mm -hmm. but also like the technical guys, the yeah. the, um, the stage manager, David himself. I mean, uh, he was like kind of not only creating the show, but making it happen, like even production wise. And uh, that was, since the tour for me was like the masterclass, like mm. every day, it's like to see, to see and to, un to work with him and un understand what he's looking for. And uh, such a brilliant mind uh, and how he works on every day, every day basis. Uh, how he maintained him, himself well during a tour. Yes. Those are those were new things for me. Like, um, like so, I really took this as a yeah a everyday masterclass with with uh, with like twenty great teachers. I love it. You say you learnt from David about how he maintains himself on tour. Yeah. Because that's that's such a big thing. This is such a really big issue. So how did he look after himself? Well, for, from what I could observe, it's um, well, first of all, he's done it more than all of us and yes. we all we all done it a lot. 
but still it's like a different generation and but the, this biking thing that's one thing yeah but like biking 15 miles every day when you're on tour i've mm. never i would have never even think about it no, no. and that keeps you in shape yes. and it keeps your mind great uh and and you actually discover the cities where you go to as supposed to go from an hotel room to a dressing room or the bus that's what you do usually doing everything with a bike like that for me was like a it's fabulous that changed my life too and at the end of the tour i wasn't as tired as i, I thought i would be um and also i could observe him having his little routine like uh in the morning the breakfast computer the, like i'm on tour but my life is the same for me it was new this because on, on tour yeah i will follow up my things and and everything but uh but not like uh I mean, you have to. He's been like on t tours that take months for many years. Yes. So you, at one point, you just find the rhythm, and I think for myself, I never kind of find that rhythm, and and I, I, I could observe from him a certain discipline, and uh, not in a heavy way, but like in a in a loving way towards himself, the way he lives with himself, how he takes care of himself. For me, it was great to observe on everybody else as well. But again, he was the most experienced out of this, and um, and I was like, how this guy is like, he's kind of way older than me, and I'm, and I'm definitely more tired than him. Yes. Mm -hmm. How no, why how is, is this that? happening? Yeah, exactly. You no, know, I was like, that's that's not. I'm doing something wrong, or, mm -hmm. or maybe I'm not doing mm -hmm. what I need to be doing. Mm. What you mean, like turning up jet lagged and and hungover? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, it was like a learning process on a, on many levels, and since since it's finished and I've been grieving, I've also been like kind of finally having the moment of of putting organizing all this new uh, how do you call this this new uh, encinamets where yeah learnings uh, learnings yeah, and now I'm I'm at, I'm at the point where I'm putting it in practice. 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 Yeah. Yeah, I think that's beautifully put. Come on then, Tim. I want to know whether you feel that you've gone through any grief having stopped this show. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel like the grief for me was probably before it ended. Like, knowing that it was going to end. Yeah, because you was... know it's horrible. You know it's going to come to an end. Absolutely. I'd say once it ends, then it's like it's easier to move on because then all of a sudden you have all this time yes but it was probably like kind of the waiting while you're you know you're doing the show knowing that there's only like you know so many weeks left so many shows left and as each you know it gets less and less every day so um and knowing that yeah we spend all this time together we see each other every day and then all of a sudden that you know that's not gonna happen mm. at that same level um yeah so for me it was more like the process of it ending as opposed to like after it ended, I would say. What's life been like since for you? Have you played all those instruments at once since that, <laughs> no, since that time? Haven't. You know, what, what have you been doing, honestly? Um, just a lot of different things, nothing like really focused, um, like not like focused on a particular project, yeah. but just you know, doing just like different, different things, different recordings, different gigs. Um, uh, I've been working on a music video with my daughter, oh, so I had to learn how to like. Yeah, I'm just making it with my my iPhone, but like just yeah. learning how to film with that and do lighting and then video editing. Um, yeah. And I, I feel like one thing that I really took away from working with David is how he was. He's just so like future and forward thinking. He's yeah. always oh yes thinking Definitely. about next project. Mm. Next project and just checking out whatever's new that's happening like. Stefan was talking about the bike rides. Like the bike rides always had a destination to like check something out, something yeah. unique that was going on in whatever city we were. Even if it was just checking out, you know, nature or some kind of like monument kind of thing that that's there or an art exhibit that's happening, uh, or something yeah, some some unique place wherever we are. Um it was always about doing something new and um and I found I found that very inspiring. So that's one thing I'm trying to like mm. take with me. I don't know if I'm always fulfilling that, but yeah. 
But it's interesting that, you know, to do something new can just be the tiniest, tiniest shift in just, you know, how you're looking at something or the angle that you're looking at it or, or just the smallest of things. And if you can acknowledge that that is something new, then it makes you feel amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think to be on tour and to be cycling out and finding places and actually living the city, I think that's extraordinary. But I think for most of us, that is, that seems just too big a thing to do each day. But yeah, I think you can get that newness just in really tiny ways in there. And look at you becoming the videographer. That's a really good thing. <laughs> I'm terrible. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sure the team is going to be like a science <laughs> rocket of video. Doing it with editing. 10 phones at the same time. Yeah, yeah that's right. Absolutely at the same time. Sopping over cameras just whenever, whenever he needs to and it's going to be fine. It's going to be completely intuitive and it's going to work. Yeah. Harness full of tape. Tape. All the phones taped. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Always pulls through the other end. Mm. Come on then, grief. Wow, my grief. I kind of like have the same sentiment as team that it was before the closing was like a couple of really intense, especially when the producers announced that the show was closed, yes. was closing. I think that's the moment that I was like, oh, this is so sad. This is... And... And once... I, I, I kind of like... Maybe it's my personality, but I, I, I tend to... get busy. Like, as soon as something finishes, I try to move on as quick. So, I went on a tour, like, a week later. I was in Italy, <laughs> rehearsing with another band, and, like had this so my mind was right away you know something i moved on like really quick but do you think you do that because you need to do that you know maybe it's a lifetime habit but yeah maybe i think my wife says that <laughs> why do you do that? you know what are you doing you <laughs> yeah know, exactly you don't need to come up but we just need to just kind of busy in there and and uh maybe that's because it's quite hard yeah i i don't know it's something, also because it was Italy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. If it was, How do you I mean, I mean it? it's like so, so it's like, I don't know, maybe you should go to Italy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Decision. not go to Italy, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's, you know, yeah okay. they have pretty good pasta. Okay. They do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, when they announced it, it was sad, and the, and the show kept on going better. Mm. We were like, yeah. we were by the end, we were killing it, and every night finding new things. And yeah, that was that. That felt a bit frustrating. Yeah, but we did, we did go on tour, and like that was that's all we knew about that it's going to be this tour, and that was the experience. Like, so mm -hmm. I remember kind of mourning the end of the tour, like, wow, this is such a profound life experience, and now this is it, you know. And then David had mentioned at some point, like, well, maybe we'll go to Broadway. Mm. So there was like an idea of more life, but it wasn't really something to hang your hat on. And then it happened. We did it again. And then that was going to end. So it was also the chance to say goodbye to it that time. And it was like, yeah, are we really going to come back? I mean, they say we are, but so we kind of went through the, I mean, I feel like I went through the process of saying goodbye to it a few times. Mm -hmm. yes. The last time that was, yeah, okay. The last time was different because different. there was no sound of, uh, there were no smells of resurrection. You know, there, no. there, there was there was nothing at all. So this had a, a kind of certainty to it. Yeah, it's true. So I don't know. It doesn't matter how many times you go through grief. When it happens again, it's still just as bad, mm. I think, really. You know, you cared so much about it. That's that's part of grieving, isn't it? Just realizing how much you care. Yeah, yeah. And that, that makes you realize how much you 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 love you love something that's right. or somebody. Right? Mm -hmm. When you don't have it anymore, you're yeah. like, oh, wow. So that means that that was great, yeah. which is good. Yeah. It is really, really good. The grief is a good, uh, it's maybe not comfortable, but it's, it's a nice emotion as well. Yeah. It's not necessarily a bad one. Full, full acknowledgement of just how much. Now, we haven't mentioned the L word, and it's important that we have mentioned the L word, as in love. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like really, truly. I think something I learned, like, about the grieving is that 
like any time you get something you want or something that you love or something you've desired, immediately attached to that is the grief. Yes. Because you're going to lose Straight it. Straight away. Yes. Like, you know, you might not, yeah, you might not feel it right away, but completely attached to that is that it's going to be gone. Yeah. Because everything ends. And I feel like this time has been very interesting because it's like, you know, like so many things like music teaches us so much about life. And this kind of, um, this episode has taught me that like, oh, like how well I live is how well I'm able to grieve and let go of something um, in love, you know, and just be like, that was beautiful. Yes. And just let it, let it fly, you know? Let it fly. That's nice, isn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Let it fly. Mm -hmm. So with grief, there is the ability to fly. Mm -hmm. That's magic, that is. Yeah. What do you feel about the grief of it all then, Bobby? I mean, I guess to add to that too, it's like letting it fly, but it, I also definitely feel like it lives forever, like in me too. So um, whether now and I've been teaching and there's, there's constant times where I'm picking through different aspects of like what I've been through and like American Utopia comes up for sure. And there is like, um, uh, yeah, I mean, this one was definitely like, it's closing and it was different than the other, the other times where we didn't see it as that. And I'm probably to a fault similar Sometimes I guess to fall similar tomorrow where it was like, okay, so what am I, what am I doing next? Well, sure. um, yeah. Um, because I think like, that's what I kind of need too. But I, but I really think that like, there's, there's no doubt about it that the most enriching experience I've ever been a part of so far is American Utopia. And then there, but there's the, you know, I think there's part of me that's like the challenge to continue to do. I learned a lot there. And so I want to take that mm -hmm. and I want to bring it here. And I want, I want to uh, share that, you know, my, new learned experiences with others as well in, in just different ways. Like um, what kind of ways are you talking about? Other creative projects yeah. where an endeavor, an endeavor can be. I did I did one um, interview with David and one of the best things, it was also out of school, and one of the best things he said was like, you guys might come to this show and you might look at this and be like, how am I ever going to do that? Like, look at all this, like the production value, blah, blah, blah. He's like, but really, this is just 12 people on a stage yeah. right now and you can make the most of like anything of having the, the least amount so don't let that uh you know interfere with like uh your imagination Absolutely. essentially right so yes. it's like yeah so for me too it's like already in the next project i do maybe it's you know probably not gonna have a broadway budget but whatever budget it has to like attempt to make the most out of that and for sure and like bring that sort of um uh creative imagination to those uh, to those endeavors and then just you know to kind of be no but we can do this yes. a lot of it is like you know working with somebody to uh, uh, especially if, if production and as an artist sometimes it's like getting them to see something that they don't really see in themselves yet Correct. too so Absolutely. it's you know it's these um, it's these yeah I mean it's it without a doubt this experience I mean I was like uh, you know the younger side of the group so when I'm like touring and with these legends that I've done, and it's like I was, it was constantly learning. It was, it was learning how to travel. It was learning how to like, you know, play music like this. It was, it was all these things. And so, um, yes, there's, you know, definite grieving, and I, and I see it, and it's like, but I, you know, I love everyone. I think uh, all that, none of that is like leaving necessarily, like within me either. I think that's part of grieving. It's accepting that. The, the the love you felt, the connection you felt, it's just transforming. You know, it's like, okay, grief, grieving is related. I mean, it's a word used to when something, when somebody dies, mm -hmm. a, a, a dear person that you know. And I think there is a, a big process, which is like, first it's like, uh, that, understanding that something happened and it's like something is, is finite it's ending yes and then what does that mean this like all those emotions of like losing someone or something so dear to you and then part of the grieving also is accepting that actually 
even though the person physically dies or this show physically ended, it's still so live in ourselves as yes. as we are putting, you know, like, oh yeah, I make use of what I learned on this show into something else. And so I think grieving, even though it has like a, um, a strong negative connotation, has like a very positive connotation as well. Yes. You know, like, and I, I lost my mom in a horrible accident and that was like the toughest thing of happened in my life but it was amazing after like uh, you know like the, the the emotion of losing someone so dear and what remain of like the, the experience of having her as my mom you know what stayed with me was like it's so rewarding so the grieving became something else you know became like more of like a understanding or it's it's not even accepting you know it's something the lessons that she taught me or you know it becomes something else so I took as a as something positive I tried to transform you know the, the death of someone dear into something like it kind of like all the lessons that she taught me were like very vivid and alive and that's how i remember her and i think it's the same thing because this show you know like okay we did it and everything but it's like it's so alive within us and you never die it's there sorry about that no no it's and actually, you didn't need to try to make the grief into um, something else because mm. it happened really because of how she was. And that's what lives now. Exactly. And that same when we talk about, you know, the essence of David, um, that's you don't have to try to make it happen. It's there. Yeah, yeah it's there. I don't really think about the show, you know, a lot. And then I realized the other day someone was asking me about it. It's like oh I got excited and I started telling like oh and then this moment and then we sing and then I and then we sing this <laughs> harmony and then all of a sudden I was like I could almost start crying like as soon as I started singing the harmony I was really like oh there's so much emotion connected and it's so rich that like knowing myself too I'm like can't touch it too much mm -hmm. I mean it's it's beautiful and does inform everything but it's also like which is also the beautiful thing like you're saying about mourning or about I mean I can still get that way if I think about my grandmother who's been gone for 20 something years 20 years like it's she's right there you know which yeah. is beautiful like I mm. oh it's such a blessing More and beautiful to the, yeah, and a yeah. blessing yeah. it's a blessing because like you know oh for my grandmother for example it's like she's visiting sometimes like I can hear her sound so I remember that's just, with this show I was telling somebody about this oh yeah then, then we turn around and then I was like oh that's then, lovely, though. What's for lunch? You know, yeah. the subject. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, that's delicious. Your FaceTime. <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's a lot to it. I think it's going to be years of unpacking it. Mm -hmm. and, and, oh, wow, learning. I see you can learn lessons from things years later that, that happen. And mm -hmm. see how you, maybe see how you behaved in a certain situation. Totally. Or, yes. And go, oh, I can do that differently now. Or I would do that differently now. Yes, you absolutely. Know. So it's always learning even after the, after it's done. Yes. And specifically learning from the show. I mean, you guys were saying, like Stefan was saying too, I realized like, man, my time, just a very technical thing just got so much better. Yeah. From playing with people with great time every night. It's like learning about rhythm and about... Yeah, you're so lucky. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My, oh, yeah. So oh, yes. Lucky. One bass player, six drummers. Oh yeah, I'm the luckiest. You're the luckiest for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so nice that we all became teachers of, of, of each other. You know, like yeah. uh, I, I <laughs> it was so funny. Like, uh, unfortunately, Gustavo is not here, but he's kind of like the the, the most like it has such a, a level of communication. Yeah, his English is like so broken. Yes, it it's is. like it's, 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 it's so, a beautiful thing. So I used to come on the theater and hear like him practice English with Jackie. 
And I was like, he's super amazing, dedicated, you know? you know, like, you know, we'd have our, we'd have our lessons and we'd work yeah. on that stuff. And or, or, you know, amazing. like, he's like, that guy's like, a, he's like the, the Pelé of like percussion because he's so <laughs> skewed and so I, I took as an opportunity to learn from him, you know, to be like, I want you to be my teacher. And I think we all had moments like that. Yeah, surely. You know, like, surely. In the, on the technical music aspect of it you know i was get tips from daniel you know daniel has this incredible snare drum technique i was like oh can you teach me that or you know like man i'm yeah, really too. thrilled though i think yeah. about it all the time when i'm playing like certain things tim stefan all you guys showed me like oh man you know so many things but you're so lucky all of you to have yeah. such an in incredible understanding of rhythm that you could not possibly have had you know all of you knowing how to get it in the pocket in a particular kind of way. No matter what the pocket is, you can do it. And um, mm. I just think you're so lucky. But we were adjusting to each yeah. other all the time. Absolutely. Too. No, it's yeah. the, it's, it is the adjusting and the ability so to do rather than locking yourself in your own in your own pocket. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, we talked about pockets before. Yeah. Yeah. Are they real <laughs> yeah, the or are they not? <laughs> <laughs>